Hey guys, uh, Andreas here. Um, this is Wax Diabolique number nine. Um, <clears throat> reasons um, that you'll soon see. This is going to be the <laughs> addition because uh, I've got some killer records here. Um, let's see. We'll start off with a light jab. Um, this is something I actually forgot about. I bought this a while back and I, I just wanted to show you. Um, it, it's the uh, Denison Kimball Trio. Soul Machine is the name of the record. Um, really cool, kind of jazzy in a way. Um, it's on Skin Graft. Um, and I'm not sure about the Kimball, but uh, the Denison um, is Dwayne Denison from the Jesus Lizard, which is why I picked it up. And it's really cool, really, um, really neat, um, kind of, kind of jazzy, a little rocky um, instrumental record. So it's nice. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Man, just so many. Um, finally picked up Yeti. I'm on duel to nothing to say here, but radical. Good stuff. Um, a masterpiece, really. Um, compared to Phallus Day, I like this record a lot more. Um, it's a double record, of course. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm super into it. So. A lot of you guys have it already. I finally got it. Swipe! Um, Seco Funk, shout out. Dude! <laughs> I picked up uh, Durando's Listen to My Song, the Music City Sessions. Um, wow, this is great, man. Um, Omnivore. I can see that. This is the label. Um, this, these are some lost tapes that they um, they put together. So this guy's still around, still alive. Um, his hit was Didn't I? Uh, which I think has been seen on Breaking Bad, which is a television show uh, that I haven't watched in, since the first season. <laughs> Apparently it's getting really good. But this record is awesome. And it's on, um, if you watch Seco Funk's um, video, it's on like a clearish brown vinyl. So interesting vinyl. Uh, great soul record, man. This is, um, it's like if Al Green was a pimp. Which, not saying he wasn't, but like, this guy was literally a pimp and, uh, and phenomenal. Freaking awesome. I think he still performs from time to time, too. Uh, let's see. Okay. <clears throat> really into the White Hills lately. <laughs> uh, I got those two uh, EPs, and um, I'm starting to pick up their full lengths, which I think there's only two of them. Um, this is their first album. Just got really good. Dead in Circles. Pulver de Steel. Alright, this is on the second side, and then In Circles 2, 3 quarters, and Let the Right One In is on the first side. It's a self titled record. Um, it's on Thrill Jockey, and it's got, it's kind of, you can see it, the cool, shiny. I really like that cover. And then I picked up their newest record, uh, HP1. Get it out for you. Um, Sonic Mainliner is the guy who turned me on to this uh, band. In the middle there. Really, really awesome, like modern space rock. Uh, what I call them. A lot of cool sounds going on. Um, I encourage all of you guys to learn the space rock and get into the White Hills if you want a little modern fix, you know. Um, yeah, they got it going on, man. Okay, moving on. Um, okay. Zip Tie 1969 showed this record. Uh, I think a couple other people have it as well. And after reading Draft Rock Sampler, um, 
and reading about this band's journey, I had to pick up one of their records, man. And I asked him if the thirty dollars was worth it. He said yes. I totally agree. Uh, Les Réalisés de Nuit, uh, heavier than a death in the family. Um, apparently, they only have fifteen songs. Uh, I was ta I was talking with the cat at the record store, the Exiled Records, where I got this, and he said that basically, yeah, they only had fifteen songs, and they just reworked them through the years. You know, different different um, chords, different lyrics, but they were basically the same melodies and things. Um, but yeah, this is great. It reminds me of like I used to be in a band called Lonesome Tumblers, and we kind of went this direction, kind of like that same like melody underneath, but like all these sounds over it. Um, kind, of, you know, kind of space rocky shoegaze, I guess. Um, psychedelic. Um, but yeah, this is awesome. I mean, the recordings aren't top notch, but I think that that, that was uh, purpose on purpose. Um, but yeah, Japanese rad, uh, phenomenal record. Uh, more Japanese action. Um, got these in the mail. Finally. Um, Dan, thank you so much, Dan in Canada, um, for turning me on to these guys in the first place. And um, give me a heads up like on when they were restocking them um, at 20 bucks spin, which is an awesome site to get records on. But um, I got the second coming from Church of Misery with the Obi strip. Here's the middle. There's the back. This one, as you can see, he's got a little Ted Bundy action going on. Um, it's on red vinyl. Um, like a clear red vinyl. Here, I'll pull it out. I can't. These, these packages are kind of tight. And we're still listening to Master Musicians of Bukaki. For those of you who are curious, Right, nice screaming red vinyl. Bloody, bloody red. Um, really good, like, uh, Doom. This is, this is probably the best Doom, Japanese Doom I've ever heard. Uh, the level of that, sap, you know, obviously Sabbath influence, as you'll see with this next one, because um, I also picked up um, Master of Brutality. And I don't really like these Obi strips. I, I mean, honestly, because I, I think it would be more neat if they were in Japanese. I just think it's kind of cheesy, you know. Kind of reminds me of that like '80s, '90s cheesy packaging. But I mean, it's, it's neat that they thought of that angle. Um, this one is uh, John Wayne Gacy. Um, real neat. Um, also great uh, Doom stoner metal. Um, and these, and, and both are on double LPs, um, and they, they're heavy as hell. Fun. This one actually is a really cool, like, gray red mix um, vinyl. Very interesting stuff. Uh, I pulled out the insert just to show you. I think these are actual drawings um, that Gacy did, perhaps. So. Um, let's see, and again with the Jap Rock, <laughs> um, Yuya Uchida and the Flowers, Challenge. This is an album of covers, um, and uh, this band would later go on to form a um, flower traveling band, uh, minus Yuya Uchida, who was a female vocalist that they brought into the studio um, to do these songs, because a lot of the songs are um, <coughs> Janis Joplin, and um, there's a Hendrix, they, they do um, Stone Free, um, they do a version of Hey Joe, they do uh, White Rum, um, Intruder, it's a Joplin song. Uh, Greasy Heart, um, Grace Slick, or Jefferson Airplane, um, and Peace of My Heart, 
which I thought was written by Chris Christopherson, but I guess not, according to this. But yeah, a uh, little insert there. Really cool. Um, glad I picked it up. You know, I'm on the Jap Rock craze right now. There's, there's a lot of records that I'm going to be picking up um, in the coming weeks, too, because this store, Exile, they just seem to have, like, everything, you know? Uh, the guys, I mean, he just really, he probably has, like, the best, like, psych, uh, avant-garde, you know, free jazz, like, all, all that stuff, man. This guy, not that other stores in, in Portland don't, but, like, Exile is just... I don't know. I'm really feeling them right now. Uh, also in the mail that I got with those Church of Misery records, I picked up uh, Flower Traveling Man's Made in Japan. This is rad. This is like this is after Satori. So this is the record they recorded after Satori. Um, it was recorded in Canada um, by um, shoot, what was the guy's name? Hold on one second. I might have to go my reference material. Anyway, um, well, this is made in Japan. Really cool packaging, like the outer sleeve looks like a package. It's got a newspaper article on it and everything. Um, let me go to my reference material since I have time. The old Jab Rock sampler here. How are you guys doing out there? I'm doing fine. Um, recorded by a keyboard player uh, who didn't understand them. I think it was a band they toured with, like a Canadian band. So um, he just dug them. So. Um, yeah, so you recorded them. Hold on one second. Okay, and then one more record. These are some local boys. Um, Portland, Oregon band um, by the name of White Orange. Um, this is a limited pressing of 500. And um, I really enjoy it. It's um, the much maligned term stoner rock, which I don't like at all, um, by the way. But desert rock is a good um, good word I use to describe this record. This is their self-titled debut. And it's a double album. And come on. It's on a triple gatefold. That's actually Mount Hood here in Oregon. I think this might be a photograph, actually. Like an old, old photograph. Um, and the record label is <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, made in China Records. Uh, and I'll show you the the cover too, because this this cover is is freaking awesome. Hold on one second. Just orient myself here. I'm running out of time. But yeah, check that out, man. Isn't that awesome? Um. These guys do sound like that desert rock scene, like that, um, uh, they do sound a little like Queens of the Stone Age or Caius, but also, I mean, they have their own thing going on. They're also, like, I mean, I've only listened to it a couple times, but I really do like it. Um, I think about, like, early Soundgarden, um, and not when Chris Cornell is, like, doing his Banshee Whale, but, like, um, more like this, the subtle Chris Cornell. Um, and the, the guitar work and the recording. The recording was done by actually uh, an acquaintance of mine, um, Adam, who's in the band, at his studio. Um, and maybe one day I'll get to work with him. But um, yeah, White Orange, uh, pick this up, go to Made in China, uh, find Made in China Records on the internet or um, look up White Orange. If you like psychedelic, uh, Kind of Queens of the Stone Age, early Soundgarden, but original, nonetheless. They they have definitely have their own sound, um, and yeah. So there you go. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.